The views and opinions expressed during this live stream do not necessarily represent the views of Framing the World. Individuals are invited to be interviewed for their unique perspective on specific topics, and not because Framing the World agrees with or endorses all other areas of opinion. Listener discretion is advised. It's going to shift into mandatory vaccinations. And how just a few months ago we were called conspiracy theorists for suggesting such a thing, well now it's openly being discussed. You're going to need it to fly. You're going to need it to go into hospitals. And it's starting with travel and hospitals, but it'll eventually go to the grocery stores and your workplace. So the narrative is going to shift into, it's not mandatory. We never said it was going to be mandatory. But if you want to go anywhere, if you want to do things, if you want to be able to provide food for your family, you want to be able to go to work, you want to be able to buy food from the store, you're going to have to get it. And that's where this is leading right now uh, when it comes to mandatory vaccines. So it's a funny one. They're going to say, no, it's not mandatory, but essentially it is. If you have to have it in order to do all these basic things, then what the heck are you going to do? Well, I know me personally, I am never, ever taking a COVID-19 vaccine. Now, if that means I'm not going to be able to, to fly anymore or to access certain things, I suppose, so be it. And that's why I'm now focusing on this homesteading idea and getting ready to just, you know, get the chickens, get the garden, grow your own food, have no need to go to the grocery store, no need to go to a, a bank or any government institution for anything. All right, guys, I appreciate you all tuning in to today's program. Uh, today, we're going to be talking with Dan Dix. Now, if you don't know who he is, he's made quite, I think he's made five uh, films so far, five documentary films, and uh, Press for Truth presents 9-11 Decade of Deception, and so he's made a lot of uh, films on 9-11 uh, and Into the Fire is another great one, United We Fall is a, a one I'll watch many, many years ago. Uh, 2012, that one came out. So he's a documentary film producer, and he's a YouTuber as well. Well, I guess he used to be a YouTuber. Uh, now he's on Bitchu, Brighteon, or I don't know if he's on Brighteon. He's on Bitchu um, Library is where you can find him. Uh, but he seems like a nice guy. I've never really talked to him before. And so this will be a, a great conversation. Uh, I wanted to talk about censorship. He's been heavily censored on YouTube, Facebook. He's been deplatformed from all those. MailChimp canceled him. His GoFundMe account got closed down. Uh, so he's been heavily censored. And so I want to talk to him about that. I want to talk to him about the Great Reset. I want to talk to him about the dark winter that uh, may be coming. And so it should be a good program. Make sure you thumbs up this video and share it to your friends and family on your social media account. We want to get the word out about these new ch these new uh, uh, channels that we have. And so uh, if you haven't yet subscribed to our BitChute and Brighteon channel, you can go over there as well. Uh, but I'm doing the best I can, guys. I'm, I'm working night in, night out trying to uh, get all these episodes up to those all alternative platforms uh this whole second strike thing on my main youtube channel kind of threw me off and so uh, i'm trying to catch up from that debacle so we're gonna get dan here on the line in a few minutes i appreciate you guys again tuning in to this program make sure you share this video on your uh social media and help us get the word out about this show but uh, we're going to get right to the program today. Uh, Dan, why don't you just start off? Let's just get right into the conversation today. Why don't you just start off and tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of a little bit about your story for those who don't know. Uh, sure. Uh, my name's Dan Dix. I started uh, a Press for Truth back in 2006. It's an independent media uh, organization where I just started kind of countering the mainstream narrative of things, uh, covering various events, and uh, that quickly grew into documentary filmmaking, and uh, I eventually went full-time, I guess, by uh, 2012, and I've just been 
banging out videos and, and, and films uh, since. I, I try to do it on a, on a daily basis, and I just take it day by day at this point. Yeah, I know. Um, I've known about you for quite some time. I, I think I first heard about you uh, during the, the We Are Change era, like kind of back in, uh, I think it was earlier than 2012, like 2009 or eight. Uh, when you were doing uh, that kind of stuff about 9-11. Was... Yeah, I mean, I, uh, I I launched the channel in 06. I, I woke up in, in the late 90s, and uh, it was shortly after 9-11 that I started getting active. Like It, it was really just an organic uh, growth of my activism. Um, shortly after 9-11, started meeting like-minded people, joining groups, going out into the streets and handing out flyers and DVDs and stuff like that. Did that for a number of years until uh 06 i was like you know what i i just need to do something on my own and i, I launched that and just uh, started doing it then and then yeah i started making the film so by 2008 2009 yeah that's that's around the time that i was starting to gain a a, a bit of momentum with press for truth yeah I, I think you know you were on alex jones and i think that's kind of where i first originally heard from you but uh, things have really changed since back then. I know um, back then, 9-11 seemed like the big deal. Like that was what everyone was talking about. But now with this whole coronavirus debacle, uh, this really has surpassed 9-11 by um, every metric. And so I just wanted to quickly talk to you about how, you know, this whole coronavirus thing is really like child's play compared to 9-11. Uh, what, what's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, the comparison to 9-11 is interesting because there was a fundamental shift in the world. There, there was a pre-9-11 and a post-9-11 world, just like we now have a pre-COVID-1984 world and a post-COVID-1984 world. The difference is back then, um, it, it was it was it was Al Qaeda. It, it was uh, you know it was the Taliban. It was all it was these nasty terrorists who are the boogeyman, and that's why your freedoms have to be infringed upon at at the uh, at the airports with the TSA and things like that. Well, now it's a, it's an interesting uh, move they made, where in the post COVID nineteen eighty four world, with this idea of asymptomatic carriers, now everybody's potentially the enemy. Now. Everyone is uh, uh, is uh, potentially going to be treated like like a terrorist in the post COVID in the post 9 11 era. Uh, so it's it's in, it's an interesting comparison that you make, but uh, that's kind of how I see this uh, playing out now. We're in a post COVID 1984 world. Things are not going to go back to the way they were before. I, I I hate to say that, but you know this idea of going back to normalcy. I think people are starting to realize is fading away. I mean, we went from 15 days to flattening the curve to what? We're we're three months outside of this being a whole year now. I think the extensions are going to continue. So yeah, man, it's crazy to say the least. Yeah, and there seems to be no end in sight for sure. Um, you know, I kind of look at this as like a, a, a crossroads in history because y y like you said, nothing is going to change. Everything is going to continue on and the new world order you know, they want a global government. They want uh, a one world government. And this is the best way to do it. You know, 9-11 really made a lot of differences here in America, but it didn't really impact every nation of the world. Uh, this, for sure, though, has impacted every nation of the world. And so it is a very scary time we're living in. Um, but, you know, it's still... There's still a lot of hope, though, too, and I want to get into some uh, some of the things that are positives at the end of this conversation. But you have been heavily censored. I know that you have uh, been censored off of YouTube, Facebook, uh, uh, GoFundMe, MailChimp has shut you down. Same with me. Uh, my MailChimp shut me down. Um, I have two strikes now on my main YouTube channel. And, um, you know, it's just a matter of time before... Uh, my main channel gets struck uh, struck down. But let's talk about censorship and how they are, you know, um, basically censoring any kind of thought that goes against uh, this whole coronavirus. 
Well, it's modern day digital book burning, essentially. Yes, they are trying to control the narrative moving forward and they're desperate to do so. Um, I think uh, this is why the anti-vax movement, as they, they call it, uh, has been such a thorn in the side for the powers that ought not to be for the last decade or two. Um, it's because of this end game agenda that is now playing out right now. Um, so, you know, people uh, like myself have been warning about that for a long time, so they need to stop people from being able to get access to that kind of information. Now, in the beginning, like uh, five, six years ago, they started trying to pass pieces of legislation to do this censorship. PIPA, ACTA, SOPA. There were a whole bunch of these uh, uh, pieces of legislation that, that were essentially shot down uh, and nev never ever did pass into law. But I think here in 2020, uh, they've taken a whole nother route here by forgetting about taking pen to paper. They're saying, let's just... Let's just do it. So they've decided to just start going ahead and taking us down one by one. Now, it's being done incrementally because if they did it in one big fell swoop, too many people would notice and be like, hey, I'm, I'm not really getting the info that I used to get. What's going on here? But when they slowly, silently start to pick us off one by one as they're doing, the mainstream masses tend to not really notice. And before we know it, the, you're, the only access to information you're going to have is from these controlled narratives as they try to push us back to the back dark corners of the internet. But but there's positive light at the end of that tunnel. We're really in an interesting wild west of, of the tech industry right now, social media sites. There's a lot of really great decentralized, some blockchain-based uh, platforms that are starting to come up as, as, uh, as a result of all this censorship. So at the one hand, yeah, it, it, it kind of sucks. But at the other hand, it's a really exciting time as, as well. I, I see it as a bit of a fork in the road that could go a number of ways. Um, but, uh, yeah, the censorship is coming down hard. And that just goes to show that we must be on track. We, we must be, you know, if, if we were saying things that they didn't care about, they would just ignore us. But the fact of the matter, they're trying to shut us down uh, means something. So I would encourage you to definitely start building your audience on, on BitChute, uh, maybe Minds, maybe Float, uh, maybe Odyssey, which used to be LBRY. Um, these are the kind of places that aren't going to censor. And uh, there's no sense in building up an audience now on Google, owned by Alphabet Inc., who could potentially pull the plug at, at any, any moment. So I'd encourage you to start checking out all these other platforms. I'm sure you probably already have. Yeah, and every show, actually, I try to promote and, and try to tell people, hey, make sure you go over to these channels and subscribe over there because... You know, our time is short here on YouTube. But I saw a meme the other day uh, that I really th I thought summed this whole conversation up perfectly. It said, censorship is used when the lie begins to lose its power. And that, that is so true. You know, people are starting to wake up to uh, what's going on. And it is losing its power. Um, you made a Twitter post the other day where you talk about... Uh, what happened to you on YouTube? And I, I just want to read this, your post real quick, because it was, it was really powerful. My life's work, 14 years, five documentary films, over 270,000 subscribers, over 35 million views, all gone, no warning, no email, nothing. Please message YouTube and help me get my channel. All those comments and supporters of my work back, first they came for the journalists. It's so true, man, and it's it's crazy. Your life's work. I mean, you've been doing this for, you know, what, twenty years? No, well, hmm. yeah. And I mean, I woke up that long ago, and I started the channel in in '06. So, uh, yeah. that, what is that? Fourteen? Yeah, fourteen years ago. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's quite a it's quite a chunk of my life invested into that particular platform. But you know, it's a little bit of a blessing in disguise. Um, uh, because I, I, you know, shouldn't be relying on Google money anyways. And, uh, you know, that at first it was like, oh, it's going to be a bit of a hit, but I, I would much rather be completely beholden to the viewer, the audience members. It's a much better relationship of me and the viewer one-on-one -on -one as they contribute and, uh, financially rather than relying on Google. So it's a blessing in disguise, really. Right. And you know what, you know, as, as more people, you know, realize that the censorship is real and they can't find, even find good information on YouTube anymore, they're going to start going to these alternative platforms. And they are. I mean, BitChute is, is, I mean, it's getting views now. I mean, how many uh, thousands of subscribers do you have now on, on BitChute? 
I, I think I got twenty five now, twenty five thousand, uh, which is is pretty good. I mean, it's uh, it's not the two hundred and seventy two I had on YouTube. I, I you know I was really hoping a, a large chunk of them would migrate over. I've been telling them to do it for years. Been on BitChute for over three years now. Uh, they just haven't done it. Um, but uh, luckily, around twenty five thousand or so have managed to. Uh, to find me over there and the videos are starting to uh, to get some views i just put out one a couple of days ago that is now one of my most viewed videos got twenty five thousand views talking about how ctv edited uh some of the corona uh, death information uh, that's got twenty five thousand views that's pretty darn good for a channel with only twenty five thousand subscribers that would never happen on youtube so i'm excited about bit shoot right Right. And and so that's why we got I want to make these kind of videos is, is to help, uh, you know, encourage people to go over there and subscribe to you subscribe to me over there. Uh, I want to talk about mandatory masks and, and this uh, such a frustrating thing. I went in to buy a, um, a Christmas tree yesterday and I walk into the store and immediately the nat mass Nazis are, you know, all over me and my I have my five kids with me and my wife. And we're just trying to go shop and get a Christmas tree. And it's just nothing but stress every time you walk into a store now. Uh, what is your feeling on these mandatory masks? Well, I, I don't like it because I've been looking into the, the science behind this. I've, I've been speaking with doctors and scientists and uh, it, it doesn't make sense. I mean, we, we've even seen from the CDC itself, Fauci going back and forth on whether or not uh, they're, they're you know, worthwhile or not. Um, let's face it, the, the holes in the masks are far bigger than, uh, uh, you know, the end of a piece of hair and the virus is much smaller than that. It just, it just makes no sense. So I'm, I'm, I'm simply not doing it. I, I have not donned one yet. Uh, and I, we constantly go into stores. And uh, most most of the time, people uh, don't bother us. Uh, and I'm talking about stores that all have the signs, big signs on the front, mandatory masks, do not enter without a mask. We just, we continue to live our lives the way we have been. And, uh, and sometimes we will get approached by an employee or a manager or sometimes other customers. And uh, I've, I've kind of re revised the way I, uh, I d discuss this now. I used to say I have a, a medical in exemption um, but uh, I, I learned that the word exemption seems to trigger them a little bit if you say, oh, because they're, oh, well, you're exempt. Um, so now I say, um, I have a medical condition that prevents me from being able to wear one. And I've been having a really a good 100% success rate with that. The moment they hear that, they just kind of back off and say, okay. Um, but that's what you have to do these days. And I, it, it does suck that there's this anxiety that comes around with it because you feel like they're all looking at you and staring at you. But I just want to encourage people, look, you're not doing the wrong, you're not doing anything wrong here. Um, if you understand the science behind it and you know that the case numbers mean nothing, the media is inflating the idea that uh, these deaths are something to be concerned with to this point. I mean, when did they ever talk about how many flu deaths there are in a particular season, which is really quite comparable to this? Never. They don't do it. They're doing it now as a way to maintain a state of fear uh, among society. And it's crazy. You just look around and you can tell how many people are afraid and how many people are watching far too much television simply by seeing that 99.9% .9 of them now are masked. It's absolutely crazy. But I would just encourage people to uh, continue, you know, living your life. Uh, as you want to and uh you know maybe there's some other people out there who are being inspired by seeing you and saying hey i didn't know that's an option um so just lead by example in that way right and you know when i when i told that lady hey i have a medical exemption i i can't do that uh she was like well you, we don't allow it even if you don't have medical exemption you got to buy it online and pick it up from the back of the store and i'm like <laughs> yeah it was just like oh this place so we left and uh um, yeah that's what I, I've only had a couple pe places that refused uh, me. There, there was one particular restaurant that was just not having it. I, um, he was saying, "No, you have to put on the mask to walk to the table and 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 back and forth from from the door to the table." And I just told him how I'm not doing that. And I explained to him, that's like having a peeing section in a pool. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. And he just said, I'm not going to debate this with you. It's, it's final. And uh, in those circumstances, um, I just leave. You know, I'm, I'm not about to sit there and try to uh, shut them down. I, I just kind of vote with my dollar at that 
time and uh, and just say, well, you know, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm no longer going to be giving you any of my business. Um, so that's how I handle those things. I, I just kind of uh, n- never going to shop there again. Right. Well, it kind of just kind of is getting us used to the fact that we have to do something to enter a store. And, you know, you, you it's not a far stretch to think that, you know, sometime maybe in the near future, they're going to have to they're going to implement where you have to take the vaccine to enter in the store as well. And so um, I know Ticketmaster and you talked about this on your program. Ticketmaster said no vaccines, no entry. Uh, can you talk mm-hmm. about that? Absolutely. I just finished uh, a video uh, today talking all about this. I just put it out. Uh, It was just uploaded uh, 45 minutes before this interview, and it it lays out all of what you're talking about, how the the, it's going to shift into mandatory vaccinations and how just a few months ago we were called conspiracy theorists for suggesting such a thing. Well, now it's openly being discussed. You're going to need it to fly. You're going to need it to go into hospitals. And it's starting with travel and hospitals, but it'll eventually go to the grocery stores and your workplace. So the narrative is going to shift into, it's not mandatory. We never said it was going to be mandatory. But if you want to go anywhere, if you want to do things, if you want to be able to provide food for your family, you want to be able to go to work, you want to be able to buy food from the store, you're going to have to get it. And that's where this is leading right now uh, when it comes to mandatory vaccines. So It's a funny one. They're going to say, no, it's not mandatory, but essentially it is. If you have to have it in order to do all these basic things, then what the heck are you going to do? Well, I know me personally, I am never, ever taking a COVID-19 vaccine. Now, if that means I'm not going to be able to, to fly anymore or to access certain things, I suppose so be it. And that's why I'm now focusing on this homesteading idea and getting ready to just you know, get the chickens, get the garden, grow your own food, have no need to go to the grocery store, no need to go to a a bank or any government institution for anything, which is what I think we need to focus on moving forward. As you said, just talk a little bit about positivity things here. Moving forward, we have to take the responsibility upon ourselves to be free. Freedom comes with individual responsibility. And uh, we should have been doing it a, a long time ago, but it's crunch time now. So it's time to take our freedoms into our own hands because pretty soon you're not going to be able to do much without that vaccine certificate. And uh, when it comes down to that, I hope to be already well in the middle of nowhere with me, my wife and my family and kids. Right. And you know what? They've been uh, they've been kind of not very clear on when everything's going to open up. I I love to travel. I travel all the time. I I was going to go over to um, Europe. Uh, a couple months ago and of course you got to take the two week uh, quarantine and then you got to quarantine when you come back it's just like uh, it's such a debacle but you know it it seems like what they're going to do is say like well to get out of that two week quarantine if you show your proof of vaccination then you can come right through Uh, it seems like that's going to be the the logical next step Maybe. Um, I I did think that until I saw something today from the CEO of Pfizer, who just recently admitted that getting the the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine does not necessarily mean that you can't spread it. He literally said that today. So uh, again, you can see that in my video from today. It's at pressfortruth.ca where the CEO of Pfizer just said he's not certain that uh, they're that that taking the vaccine will guarantee that you will not continue to be a spreader. So that should say a lot. I, I you know, I, I don't think we're going to have that immunity passport like they've kind of been floating the idea that, hey, you know, if you get the vaccine, you get the thing, you have a little check mark, you, you get to walk a little freer. I'm not so sure that's going to be the case. I, I think they're going to be able to say, uh, yeah, you got this, you got that, you got that. Great. But we have to play it safe here, folks. So you need to be uh, controlled as well. I, I hope I'm wrong, but I think that's where it's going. Well, I, I hope you're wrong for sure. Um, you know, it, it, it's it, the um, the dark winter that they keep talking about. Do you mm-hmm. believe that this this virus? Because you know, right now you have a 99.9 percent chance of surviving it. Do you believe that they're gonna um, release something a little bit more deadly? in the future or do you believe that it's just they're just going to use this 
Uh, that's something I've been talking about for, for a while. Um, uh, the, this idea of a second wave and a mutated a new version of the virus uh, coming into play. And I think that's a very, very real possibility. Let's face it. These guys are eugenicists who are at, at the top of this thing. They do want to have a lot of people uh, killed, uh, essentially. And yeah, I, I do think that is a, a very real uh, possibility uh, uh, moving forward. Um, sorry, what, what was the question again? <laughs> well, I, I mean, do you, do you think that a dark winter is coming? So you answered it. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I do think this is a multiple phased uh, agenda. Like, you know, it, there's multiple plans here. And if that does happen, um, uh, they will then point to all of us pro-freedom people. They say we're anti-mask and anti-lockdown. Really, we're pro-freedom. They'll say, you see, these are the people who caused things like this and all this second wave. And now we really need to lock it down. Uh, so, yeah, it, it, it makes sense if you think from the point of mind of an oligarchy who's running these things to, to do that. Let's face it, we know they operate through this modus operandi of order out of chaos. They have to generate enough of the problems in order to offer the global solution to global problems. So, uh, indeed, that is a very real possibility moving forward. Well, what are some of the, the positives that are going to come out of this, uh, not only censorship, but the coronavirus? Well, there's a lot of positives. I mean, um, th there's a lot of things that people are doing right now that they should have been doing uh, a, a long time ago, but they've kind of been forced into it. Spending time with your loved ones um, is, 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 a, is a positive thing, you know, and uh, th that's something that I, I hope. Uh, people are doing in, in a good way. Meanwhile, we are hearing uh, that there's uh, things like domestic disputes and, and depression and suicide is on the rise. There's a lot of bad things, too. Um, but uh, I, I'm liking the fact uh, that, uh, you know, me and my wife can enjoy our, our, our time together. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's... <laughs> but. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to find positive things in this current climate right now. Um, but I, I continue to just remain positive and hopeful because, uh, you know, I, I, you know, as as a Christian, I, I do believe that our, our this whole thing is is determined. It, it will come to an end eventually. God is in control ultimately here. Um, and and I, I and I do believe that. So now it's just a matter of. You know, uh, how many minds can we open? How many how many souls can we save? How many people can we free from uh, this tyranny uh, before God puts an end to it all, really? So uh, that's kind of how I see the, the bigger picture, I guess you could say. Well, back in March, I, I remember hearing a bunch of uh, I, a bunch of reading a bunch of news articles that were talking about how we need to get rid of cash. Um, in China, they were saying how they need they started to burn cash and stuff because because um, coronavirus could be on the cash. And then we started to see corn shortages here in America. How is uh, how are they going to use this to create a, a digital currency? Well, they already are. Um, you may have noticed there are so many merchants now who will refuse to accept cash under this notion that it's somehow dirty or dangerous. Uh, the, the digital cashless society has been a part of the agenda for a long, long time. And now they absolutely have the uh, ability to, uh, to pull the trigger there. So when it comes to cryptocurrencies, I think, uh, you know, I started covering, for example, Bitcoin back in uh, 2011, 2012, I think was my first video on it. And back then I used to uh, describe it as a Trojan horse. I saw it as this, uh, uh, this, this thing that was going to trick freedom-minded people and libertarians into accepting the mark of the beast, the digital cashless, uh, one world digital cashless society. But over time, I've had a better understanding of the technology behind Bitcoin, the nature of its decentralization and how that's actually a problem. So I think there's going to be a lot of cryptos to come and go before the one uh, that uh, will uh, eventually be um, released and controlled. Uh, by the power elite, but uh, I think there's going to be a lot of cryptos coming and going before that happens. And uh, Bitcoin is not necessarily it. They will either have to destroy it or completely co-opt it somehow. Um, but yeah, I think this coronavirus, uh, COVID-1984, is is the perfect uh, method for being able to remove cash. And it's happening incrementally, but it's happening 
very quickly um, as well. So I just read a story today. A man went into the bank to try to cash in his uh, $1,000 bill because he read that they're soon not going to be um, counted as currency anymore, and they won't let him do it already. I uh, won't let him cash in uh, his bill. They're removing the I, I didn't even know there was a thousand dollar bill, a, a, a $55 bill or something. They're removing all of them. They took the penny away a while ago. But I mean, these are inc incremental moves towards it. And there's no doubt in my mind that uh, our future is leading towards a digital cashless society. Absolutely. Well, the Bible talks about, you know, someday there will be where you can't buy or sell without the mark of the beast. And you can kind of see how. You know, all these things that seem so far off in the future are just kind of happening. And yeah. you can see the early stages of everything. Uh, can you talk about that? Well, imagine someone reading those passages from the Bible a hundred, a couple hundred years ago, even just a hundred years ago. It wouldn't really make much sense about how, how could it possibly be possible that everyone in the world would have to have this mark in order to buy or sell? Well, in today's day and age, we can clearly see how that is possible with with the Internet and the way everything is connected and the way things are going. It, it's really starting to unfold before our eyes, just as the Bible warned us about. Um, so I, I think now the climate is, is, is ripe and ready for this. Um, and if people are not willing to accept it, as I said, they will... They will utilize order out of chaos. They will create some sort of false flag uh, to to utterly crash uh, uh, the, the dollar and it just to in, introduce this digital global currency. Um, but as as we say, it's it's all being uh, discussed uh, in the book of Revelation, in the book of Daniel, and uh, and others, and um, it's all coming to fruition. And as you said, we can see it now. We, we the systems are in place. The technology is there. Uh, and the incremental moves already kind of, you know, just the tap and go now, and you don't even, it, it's, it's all moving towards this idea of having a, a, a microchip to buy or sell. Um, and I think that's definitely going to be in the future. Again, this is why we need to get outside of this system. Step, don't be a part of this worldly nonsense and just, uh, you know, focus on your family, uh, reconnect with God, you know, uh, dive, dive back into your Bible. And uh, that's what we're going to need moving forward. Well, uh, Stripe recently uh, canceled my payment processing uh, service on my store. And, hmm. uh, you know, they don't give any explanation why that you just violated terms of service. And you can't there's no recourse you can't like write them and say hey what did i do wrong like uh, let me fix it like what 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 well, how can we resolve this it's just silence you know and you write them two three times four times it's just nothing um you can you can also see how uh they're gonna eventually anyone who um stands up against their agenda they're gonna make it so they can't even um uh, have money coming in so you have to just go work for someone else you know yes uh the the financial attacks are coming on me as well as you said they took down my my youtube uh you know that had 270,000 people my facebook had 350,000 people they terminated it my twitter pft twitter had 25,000 they they terminated that um, but the the next phase was uh, uh, hit me at GoFundMe. I, I launched this campaign. It got seven thousand dollars within twenty four hours, and then they they killed it. They terminated it and refunded the money back to everyone. And uh, a lot of this is actually stemming from uh, not just the powers that ought not to be at Silicon Tech, you know, at, at Silicon Valley, the tech conglomerates, but it's a lot of people who are minions of of, of this. And who are doing it like anti hate.ca for example is a group that the canadian government granted two hundred and seventy thousand dollars to and what they do is they go around on these mass flagging campaigns to try to take down guys like me who they consider to apparently be racist which is insane um so there's a mass flagging campaign and i know the next phase is to move into the financials they're going to start uh, uh trying to take me down financially uh, I, I already know how this is happening in the back end, and I'm already doing things to protect myself. Just just look right now. Uh, Adamson's Barbecue in Etobicoke, Ontario, has raised over $300,000 on GoFundMe, and there's currently a petition 
with over 7,000 signatures demanding that GoFundMe removes that money. So this is coming from these these minions in society who who are are just authoritarian themselves and want to want to you know financially hurt people uh so yeah i agree man it, it, i'm really so, sorry to hear that that happened to you uh, with your uh, with your account there but uh another good another good reason why it's uh, might not be a, a bad idea to look into some of these cryptos as i say yes there is a digital cashless society coming but some of these ones aren't necessarily going to be it and uh, you may be able to protect yourself and hedge yourself against all this stuff uh, by utilizing some of that. Uh, that's my plan. Get in, get out, and, uh, and 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 that's it. So, yeah, we're going to have to look at things like that moving forward because the attacks are going to continue, not only on the social media side, but on the financial side as well. Yeah, a couple years ago, same thing for GoFundMe. I was, I was holding a conference and... Uh, I you know I raised like five thousand dollars or something, and then all of a sudden I got this email saying everyone was refunded. I started getting emails from the people saying, "Hey, why is my money returned? Like, what's really? going on? Is the conference still happening? Like, and it's just like they just try to do that just to you know make you feel stress and give up. But you know what? A lot of people are just it, it encourages them more. They're doing more. They're they're go subscribing to BitChute, Brighteon, mm -hmm. Rumble, all these different platforms and just trying to 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 get out there farther. So I think that's one of the positives that, you know, people are, are leaving these platforms and 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 creating some competition. But the unfortunate mm. thing is now uh, these alternative platforms like BitChute, Bredion, they're they're canceling their payment processing. So they can't even uh, uh, do stuff. So you can definitely see how in the future they're going to do that. So there is no competition for these large conglomerates. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think even farther out, though, they will stop us from having a website. Now, I've never heard you talk about this. I'd love to hear your thoughts on um, this. But uh, do you believe that in the future they will uh, stop you from eventually having your own website? I think that's a, a part of the agenda, yes. Um, but that may be difficult to do short of, say, uh, an EMP or uh, completely wiping out the Internet um, because there's new, very innovative uh, platforms arising. So uh, BitChute and, and Mimes and Float, they're all great, but they're all a little bit too centralized. Like if the guys from BitChute get hit by a bus tomorrow, I'm not, I'm not so sure – what the fate of the platform would be moving forward. But however, LBRY.TV is very interesting to me. And I think we may be able to do something similar with it, with our websites. And so essentially the way it works is it, it's similar to like a, a Bitcoin. There is no central organization. There is no uh, a place that you can go to shut it down. It, it exists on individual nodes all over the world, millions of them. So for, similarly, in order to shut down Bitcoin, you'd have to get the blockchain off of every single miner's computer in the world. I, I just don't understand how they would do that without just completely killing the Internet. So it's similar uh, with LBRY.TV. It functions in the same thing. It's completely decentralized. Uh, the, the, the entire blockchain exists on these individual nodes all over the world. So it gets very, very difficult to take it down. Um, so... That's why I said earlier, we're in this kind of wild, wild west of the tech industries who are starting to figure out who's going to come out on top. And there are really cool, innovative sites like that starting to be built. So, yeah, there is a plan to eventually shut shut us down in our websites. But the free market is speaking and they're starting to come up with ways around that, which, again, is is really exciting. Yeah, it is. Definitely. Well, how can people support you, Dan? And uh, what what where can they find more information about you? Best place to go is probably pressfortruth.ca. Um, there, uh, it, I, under the breaking news tab, you'll see all my daily videos. But at the top, we have two right now uh, banners. One uh, is to show you how you can show your financial support. And another one is to where you can find me after being banned on YouTube, on all the other platforms that I'm now posting to on a daily basis now. Um, so pressfortruth.ca is probably the best. If people want to Financially help me. Um, Patreon is good. Uh, Patreon.com slash press for truth. Subscribestar.com slash press for truth or just press for truth.ca slash donate. Um, but I would say 
subscribe to me on on BitChute, Minds, Float, and Library, now rebranded as Odyssey. These are the ones I'm focusing on moving forward. They're kind of the ones who have come out on top. Um, and links to any of those can be found in the description of all of my videos. Great. And what what uh, which one are you focusing on the most out of all those? Are you focusing on BitChute or is it Library? Well, I, I've been navigating this space all by myself here, like getting terminated four months ago, and I've noticed certain things have good things about them and negative things, and all of them have good and bad things. So, for instance, um, Float doesn't currently have the ability to be able to embed their videos onto my website. That's a problem for me, so I haven't really been pushing that one as my go-to. Um, uh, mines and library are great. The the uh, uh, processing time is very fast. I can upload a video and it'll be live within you know minutes. But the playback isn't very good. People are experiencing buffering issues, so that's a big deal for me. You know, if people have to wait a, even a few seconds, they'll just click away and won't watch it. Bitshoot, however, has excellent playback. Y you never really have any buffering issues. It plays back just fine problem with BitChute is sometimes there's processing issues. It, sometimes it takes a long, long, long time for my videos to get processed. So having said all that, I've actually started kind of focusing more so on BitChute simply because of the playback issue. All the other ones are still trying to get that figured out. And uh, if, like I said, if people have to sit there watching a spinning wheel and wait for more than a minute or two, they're just going to click away, change the channel, watch something else kind of thing. Um, so uh, that's an issue. So, so far to me, BitChute has the best playback and that's why I'm focusing on them. But uh, I hope to God they get their processing speed up uh, because that's going to be key, especially when it comes to reporting breaking news. Well, all that costs money and you know what? I'm sure they're doing the best they can. I, I, I'm i sure it'll get better and better as time goes on. But mm -hmm. Dan, I appreciate you coming on the program today uh, and and talking with us. Yeah, for sure, man. My pleasure. I uh, want to encourage you to keep it up and, uh, you know, start really hustling to get your audience over there on, on BitChute. And some of these other ones, if you're not on them, check them out. Uh, they're all good. It's a good idea to kind of uh, hedge yourself, kind of spread your eggs out into multiple baskets, as it were. Diversify your video sharing platform portfolio. And, uh, and any one of those can, can take off at any moment now. So, as I said, it's an exciting time to be involved in uh the freedom movement. Awesome, man. Well, I hope you have a good day and God bless. You too, man. Take care. All right, bro. Bye. All right, guys. Well, that was Dan Dix. I really hope you go check him out on uh, BitChute and support him over there. Uh, it's it's really it's really sad, kind of how fast things are moving. And I really wish people would wake up to what's going on. Uh, in the world out there because this is such a serious issue and it is such a power grab that I just don't understand why people aren't getting what's happening. And so please make sure to share these videos. Uh, you know, they're, they're powerful tools to just help people wake up to all the agendas that are going on in the world right now. But again, guys, I want you to head over to our BitChu and Brighteon channel and subscribe over there. We're also on UgTube as well. And so um, if you haven't yet gone over there, make sure you go over there. And if you only can go to one, make sure you go to our BitChu channel. Um, that is the most important channel uh, for me right now. It's kind of the one that I'm, I'm keeping updated as fast as possible. Uh, but you know what I, I I'm gonna and I'm trying to figure out how the best way to do this but we're gonna have another show tomorrow night but I think I'm gonna have to go down to like two shows a week um, till after the holiday season because I have uh, the Daniel series I want to complete and it's something that uh, I've been meaning to complete for a long time just kind of you know it, it gets to a point where you have to just be able to survive as well. So it's like, yeah, I got to get it done, but I also got to make money. So uh, we're, I, I'm going to be focusing on the Daniel series a little bit more as we go into this uh, Christmas uh, season. And so I think I'm going to go down to two episodes a week. I'm not sure which days they're going to be. It might be random. I don't know. 
Uh, but uh, I think that's the plan. And then after the new year, we'll start back up again, going uh, full bore. But I appreciate you guys tuning in to today's program. Um, if you have any ideas for the show, please make sure to send me an email, filmnut99 at yahoo.com or paul at framingtheworld.com and just uh, let me know the guest name, their email address, where they, I can reach them. And that would be uh, make it so much easier uh, for me. But uh, make sure you guys share this video, give it a thumbs up, and uh, subscribe if you haven't to this channel. Uh, we're trying to you know get the word out about all these different channels, and so um, I really appreciate you guys tuning in and supporting this show. So um, yeah, that's it. Thanks, guys, for tuning in to today's program. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless. <laughs> Make sure you smash that like button and subscribe to Framing the World. <laughs> Also, check the video description for our backup channels. Bye, guys! <laughs>